let's start to play with this idea of normal distributions. So let's start with, let's do this example. We are a college admissions expert. I have two students, but only one spot left in my program. So I need to pick a student to admit to my program, and I have to tell one person, I'm sorry, you're going to have to try some other time. So this is kind of a big decision. I'm like changing someone's life here. So all I know is that student A has an ACT score of 29, and then I've included the mean and the standard deviation of the ACT. And I know that student B has an SAT score of 680, and I've included the mean and the standard deviation of the SAT. And I need to pick a student. Well, obviously, I'm going to want the student who scored higher, who did better. They're probably a better student to have in my program. So I need to be able to look at these scores and figure out who did better. So we're going to start like this. Let's start over here. We're going to do the ACT. Oh, sorry. My thing just died. Let's try that again. Here we go. Okay, so we've got ACT here, like that. In the middle goes the mean. The ACT mean is 21. And then we always go at least three standard deviations out on both sides, because that helps us with the 68, 99.5 rule. So I have plus one standard deviation, plus two standard deviation, plus three, and minus on the other side. And I put the number for my mean down here. I also want to fill in the numbers here, and it just takes a little simple math. This is the mean is 21. I am going to add one standard deviation to get the next number. So 21 plus one standard deviation is plus five. So 21 plus five plus my one standard deviation gets me 26. To get to the next one, I'm going to add a second standard deviation. So add five again, get to 31. And then I'm gonna add another, a third standard deviation to get 36. Excellent. And we can go the other way, minusing standard deviation. So this time minus 5, 21 minus 5 is 16, minus a second standard deviation gets me to 11, and then minus a third standard deviation is a score of 6. So let's look at where student A is. Let's say student A is the green one. So student A has a score of 29. So if I estimate, that's probably like there-ish. So about halfway between one and two standard deviations. That's where they're at. So what I want you to do is now try and do the same thing with the SAT curve. So draw in your mean three standard deviations above, three below, and I want you to fill this one in just like we did over there. So pause the video and try to fill that one in on your own, and then come back later to see how you did. Let's check what you got with what I got. So I have my ACT curve, here's my mean, my standard deviations up and down, and I'm gonna call student B the blue, and they got a score of 680, which is going to be about there-ish. So it also looks like it's pretty close to halfway between one and two standard deviations. So I look at this and I start to think, who am I going to pick? Well, it's kind of hard. They both look like they're at the same place on the curve. If student A was down here and student B was up here, then it would be pretty obvious to pick student B because they have a higher standard deviation, so their score is more unusual. It's higher. 
Or even if student A was like a negative standard deviation and student B was a positive standard deviation, that would be pretty obvious that it's student B because their score was a lot higher. But we look at this and their scores seem to be pretty similar when we compare them, which means it starts to get really hard to pick one. Well, this is where we come into an idea called a z-score. If we need to be very precise about how many standard deviations above or below the mean a score is, so not just like, eh, it's like 1.7 standard deviations above the mean-ish. If we need to be really precise and be like, this is 1.689 standard deviations above the mean. That's where we use a z-score. A z-score is there to tell us how many standard deviations from the mean a number is. Exactly. So if student A is 1.6 standard deviations above the mean, and student B is 1.62 standard deviations above the mean, the z-score will tell us. And then it's easier to compare because whoever has the higher z-score, that means there are more standard deviations above the mean, which means they got a better score. So here's our z-score equation. Let me explain what each of these mean. X is the score or the data point. Mu is the mean, like we've learned. Sigma is the standard deviation. So let's use this formula to go back to our students now. So we've got student A and student B. And let's start by listing. So student A, X is their score. So I can go back here. Student A scored 29. Mu is the mean, so the mean on the ACP was 21. Oops, that should be a 29. I don't know why I wrote that. There we go. And then sigma is the standard deviation, which we look back and it was 5. So let's plug it all in. We get 29 minus 21 all over 5. And we just plug that into our calculator and see that it's 1.6. Okay, so student A scored exactly 1.6 standard deviations above the mean. I want you to try student B. So we'll go back in the problem, list what they are, plug it into the equation. And by the way, just so you know, the equation is very picky. It's always data point minus mean, not mean minus data point. That is different. Don't do that. So pause the video, plug all that in, and see how many standard deviations above the mean student B got, and then we can come back together and compare them. This is what you should have gotten, 1.413. So student A has a score of 1.6 standard deviations above the mean. Student B's score is only 1.413 standard deviations above the mean. So it's pretty obvious that student A did much better than student B. Well, I shouldn't say much better. They did better than student B. They have the higher score because it's farther from the mean. It's higher up. So now we can confidently say as a college admissions expert, let's accept student A into our program. They scored better than student B. So that's the idea of a z-score. In the next video, we'll do an example problem that puts together everything we've learned from both videos so far.